Let me take you on a quick roller coaster ride through the insanity that is antinatalism. We do this by looking at its main basic premise being that suffering is objectively bad and that we must do whatever we can to eliminate this suffering. Now, the simplistic antinatalist solution to this problem is to propose that humanity should stop procreating. But of course, that is an idiotic idea because that is not going to actually stop any suffering. And let me explain this by just taking the proposals to their natural conclusion. The simplest proposal, the simplest antinatalist proposal, is to simply stop procreating as a human race. The problem with that is that that doesn't, of course, stop suffering at all. At least, I believe that many of the proponents of the antinatalist mindset, such as, for example, Gary and Mandem, wouldn't be of the opinion that animal suffering is in any way inferior or less relevant or less salient than human suffering would be. So if we human beings were to simply stop procreating, that would not stop animal suffering at all. In actual fact, it would, would make things an awful lot worse, because without the human race on this planet, the whole planet would revert back to a state in which all life on it would be subjected to natural selection, with everything that comes with it, such as predation and disease, and all of these things are known causes for suffering in the animal kingdom. So simply removing humanity from the planet isn't enough. And I know that some of the mental giants of this movement have proposed more drastic solutions. But the problem with that is that no matter how piously you might wish for such solutions, the reality of the situation is that we do not have the technical wherewithal to achieve anything like a complete extermination of life on this planet. That is completely impossible. Even if we subject this planet to an all-out nuclear holocaust, there is plenty of life that is going to survive and procreate after that. It's going to inherit the Earth. It's going to continue to be subjected to natural selection and so on and so forth, and therefore suffering will continue unabated. Pious notions such as crashing the moon into the earth are never going to materialize. And even if they did, you would still have to consider that it is more than likely that of the hundreds of billions of stars and the hundreds of billions of galaxies, there will be plenty there on which life is also flourishing and also suffering. So, it would be a selfish solution to destroy this planet completely, even if we did have the technical wherewithal. That leaves us back at the basic premise of suffering is bad, objectively bad, for some strange reason they seem to think so, and how do we avoid it? Well, if our self-extermination and extermination of all life on this planet are unrealistic goals, then what can we do instead? Well, here's an idea. The first thing would be to observe that a lot of the life on this planet is still subjected to natural selection, and as a result to disease and predation, and therefore suffering on an enormous scale. Now, we cannot exterminate this life of this planet, even if we were to somehow try and exterminate all this animal life of, this, of the planet, we would leave a planet that is completely uninhabitable by anything that remains, including ourselves. So that is not going to be possible at all. And if animal extermination is not possible, then the only viable alternative to that is animal husbandry. And that is in fact 
something that could lead to at least a great reduction of suffering on this planet. Now it is a pipe dream at the very least, but the antenatalist premises do seem to lead to such craziness anyway, so let's just take it a little bit further anyway, even if this is not a position that I myself would espouse, but let's see where it might take, if it might take to at least a somewhat saner outlook on reality. So, if we are thinking about animal husbandry, well at least then we can take natural selection, disease and predation out of the equation, or at least work towards that goal, in the same way that we are working towards that goal with regard to humanity itself, where we have made technological and medical advances that have made us less susceptible to disease, and certainly have pretty much eliminated predation altogether. So that is something that we could apply to the animal kingdom as a whole. But then we are, co are of course left with all this animal biomass that we are now husbanding. And what are we going to do with it? Now the thing about animals is that all animals, including ourselves, will die. And as a result, all of us are most possibly going to be subjected to some form of suffering towards the end. Now, there may be all sorts of moral and ethical reasons why we cannot simply implement a mercy-killing system on humanity, and I'm certainly not going to be the one suggesting such a thing, but hey, Gary, maybe it's something that you might consider. But, with regard to animals, that's an entirely different story. And the funny thing is that this, of course, also illustrates why antenatalism and the more fanatical forms of vegetarianism are such easy bedfellows, because they are both based on a highly idealistic and completely unrealistic outlook on reality and a denial of the reality that everything is mortal. You see, the vegetarian, even though they might not admit to this publicly, but subconsciously seems to be denying the reality of death with regards to animals around us, which of course cannot be denied. And if we are to be taken into account that animals around us are going to die, then the best way of dealing with the situation is, in addition to husbanding them, as we are, as I am proposing in this particular flight of fancy here, I'm not being too serious here, but follow me for a moment, then of course, as part of this, would not only be to try and give the animals under our care a enjoyable, disease and predation free life, but in addition to that, a quick and merciful death. And then what are we going to do with these animals after we kill them? Well, I would suggest since animals are made out of delicious, juicy meat, that we eat them. Bon appétit.